Welcome to Soul Busy. I'm Rach. And I'm Carly, your CEO and COO sisters. We share unfiltered convo on balancing hustle with mindfulness while running successful businesses with soul and and the the real life life between between it all. Today's guest is Ashley Hasiotis, an Amazon best-selling author of The Unspoken and founder of the childhood cancer charity, One Mission, which has supported over 60,000 families. Alongside her husband, Ari, Ashley co-owns Rain Car Wash and 30 locations of Seven Brew Coffee Stands. She blends spirituality, business, and takes no shit mentality, and we couldn't love her more. Welcome, Ash. I love you too, and thank you for having me. Welcome. 60,000. Yeah. Wow. I was just like, <clears throat> that's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. It's been a long time. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. One mission is, I feel like, very well known. Like all over the, I, the nation? I think so. I don't know. No, on the Definitely. radio. Are you kidding? I'll hear you on the on radio. The radio everyone, and I'll tell yeah. Joe, I'll tell Joe and he'll be like, you know her, don't you? I'm like, yes. It's a good, it's a good ad though. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, we used to get, you know, first of all, all the stuff, all the advertising that One Mission gets, we get for free. Really? Um, That's amazing. Yeah, always. Um, so sometimes we would get, you know, anyone who would do the voiceovers for us because we didn't pay for them. And we were never always like a hundred percent like, yeah, it's you. nailed it. So I started doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I got to just do no, it yourself. I hear your voice. It's good. I really like it. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, our opening party of Parlor was all for donation to one mission. Yes, remember I that? remember this, yeah. And you were a huge part of that. Yeah. You've actually been a part of my story for so long. So when we had our first location in this building that we're in now, where yeah. Parlor is now, I remember I had the long, the, the long space, the 2,500 square foot space. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, where you that's and where I met. the photo shoot. When I was still doing makeup. Yeah. yeah. We did your photo shoot there. Yeah. And yeah, you've seen me naked. Yeah, I've seen you naked. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful body. Nice naked body. Really <laughs> nice naked body. I've seen, it's actually funny, like, in conversation with people, I've seen a lot of people naked. I can imagine. And it's actually, I, I, like, I'm not phased by it anymore. Like, the <laughs> shit I used to do is so bizarre. And the things I used to say in my salon, yeah. I'd be like, just hold your nipple. Yeah. Like, it's just, like, a <laughs> very odd shoot. career path I've I taken. I remember feeling so um, humble but that day, but uh, also, like, having such admiration for models because oh, yeah. I had to go home and take a nap. Oh, it's not after easy. My boudoir it's shot. miserable. The way that they have to contort their bodies oh, yeah. and hold them, you'd be like, Ashley, just stay. St- nope, no, no, up a little bit more. No, 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 now down. Now stay there. And my body would be shaking. Oh, it's, it's truly scary. an art form. Mm-hmm. And like when you, now that you've experienced it, yeah. models move. They like dance. They yeah. have like an action to them. It's very interesting, yeah, actually. It is. Yeah, I'm definitely a model snob at this point. Like, I'm like, I want someone who moves, please. <laughs> it's fun with Sleepy Tie. So yeah, you are like, I would love for you to tell our audience about your story because yeah. you are just like a clusterfuck of like amazingness. There's just so much, like, first of all, there's a lot there. You're a psychic. Your child had cancer. You started a f- crazy, incredible foundation. You help so many children that have cancer and their families. You are owned Cumberland Farms. You sold Cumberland Farms. You now have franchises of two different types of businesses. I mean, like, this is like, how how does this all happen in a lifetime? Tell me you're tired. And also, I think your (laughs) continued ambition, I think, is what really is very impressive I want to know about that, too. Um, And I'm like, just, I find you to be impressive in so many areas, and I want everybody to understand your story first. Oh, my God. Love. Well, first of all, it goes both ways. I have huge admiration for both of you, Um, even my kids. We love them so much. My kids want to come and work for you when they grow. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. My story... You know, well, it was born out of, you know, kind of like a shitty childhood, right? That's kind of where the unspoken was, is really based on my childhood. Uh, But I always knew at a very young age, I wanted to be a powerful woman. I did not see my mother as a powerful woman. And for me, that was what I knew I didn't want what she was. Interesting. God love her and rest her soul. And I have a better relationship with my mom now that she's passed than when she was alive. Because you've healed. Totally. I've said I've spent and continue to spend hours upon hours healing that relationship and those wounds. But if you don't mind, could you tell us like why the childhood was challenging? Like in summary? Yeah, yeah. Um, my mom was emotionally abusive. She abandoned me a lot, uh, and she used her words against me, basically. So it was, you know, whenever just even small things like, you know, wow, nice zit. Or, you know, like, you're going to go out of the house looking like that. I mean, it, there was just so many times. And then times where she wouldn't come home. Or I wrote about in one of the chapters in my book was I had, I was playing basketball. Um, I was a volleyball player, but in high school I was playing basketball to stay in shape. And I got 
terribly injured and I dislocated my knee and the trainer was like, you know, you have to go to the hospital. And so I called my mother from the payphone, and I was like, hey, mom, like I have to go to the hospital. And she was like, it's snowing out. <laughs> I'm not coming to get you. Take the bus back to school. And it was really like in that moment, I was full of shame because it was, em- it was embarrassing. Yeah. You know, like, so that trainer's like, so is she going to come pick you up? And I was like, um, no, she can't right now. And I was like, you know, I crutched away and sat with my team on the bench. And, but I remember feeling so alone, alone, but like, like full of shame. Like, I'm not good enough for you to come pick me up. That makes me sick. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine as a mother? No, never. No, you know, it's funny. And I have these like thought patterns that run through my head as I'm parenting. And like, I'm in a moment where like, maybe somebody's having a tantrum or there's, you know, like a bad moment. And I think to myself, I'm, be in 5D, make a joke of it, <laughs> be silent, be calm. Yeah. And I have to like kind of, you know, because when it gets heightened, it's yeah, hard. Yeah. But then I think to myself in that thought pattern, what would someone who's not like this do? And I think mm. about abused children and I get very sad. Like yeah. in that way, it's like all at once. I, because then you, as a mother, you relate to like, it's so easy to like treat somebody incorrectly or like to yeah. hurt them. And I just, I, it makes me so sad, the emotional trauma that can come from that type of motherhood. Well, that's interesting you say that because I have a lot of sadness for my children, for my own children. Um, they were raised by an unhealthy mom, right? I like what I mean. was so full of pain and suffering that. But you're still raising them. <laughs> I was raising kids, but I was um, I had no fuse. I had no patience. Yeah, I should. I, sh- I had a short fuse, um, and I mean, I've cried to them. You know, obviously Nicholas was different because he was in the hospital, um, but that only actually made my anxiety worse, right. having had a sick child. Of course. So by the time Eleni came around and then Zoe subsequently, um, I look back on their childhood with sadness that I did. I was not a good mom. I think there's multiple ways you can look at that. Obviously, I'm going to spin it to the positive that you made beautiful children that yeah. like are doing beautiful things in the world and they're really good kids. So yeah. at the same time, it's like, have you ever seen the visual on Instagram where it's like how generations heal from trauma? Yes. And it's the, the it's like a bunch, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a bunch of cups. One, the first cup is very dirty water mm-hmm. and you and you watch the clean water entering the dirty water and you see how long it takes for yeah. the water yeah. to filter out to clean. Yeah. You did the work to heal the, them. Yeah. So their, cl- their sure. water is clean. 100%. And know? I actually feel really confident in that now. And it, even my marriage is taking that to the next level. You know, like we both were raised, you know, kind of by animals. Ari and I, and we'll get to that story for Cumberland Farms later. But, um, you know, we are still healing. So I now can own my stuff with my kids. Like, whoa. I should not have just said that to you. Yeah. That's real. That's like, totally I, I real. respect that. I hate people who sit in, on their horse and they're like, I'm the best and I'm perfect. And I'm never going to say fuck to my child. Right. Like, well, to that point though, it, aren't we all always healing? Like for sure, but not everybody knows it. Right. Yeah. Not everybody. Does. I just mean that in the sense, like things I've been through in my life that I could categorize as traumatic as I get older, I have different viewpoints of them. Mm-hmm. So like, as I get older and think about that past trauma, I heal differently as I get older. Yeah. Oh, again and again and again, you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm like, Oh my God, wow. I can't believe I went through that. And I can't believe I healed from that. And I can't believe I learned that lesson. Let me learn it again. Totally. But you also you know? knew you weren't going to be the mom that your mom was to you. I was so set against it, but it's so interesting how often I showed up like her when my kids were little, like, yeah. Blah. Well, how would you show you? up as anything else? That's what you were I had taught. Modeling is yeah. probably what you were taught. 90% of how we be, we are as people is modeling. Yeah. You are kind of where you came from. Um, and, you know, breaking um, ancestral trauma. Yeah. And, you know, is it was one of the things that I think God put me on this earth to do. Definitely. It's Absolutely. funny though. Like you really know generationally, like I, I think my mom was saying, cause my brother Jesse just went to Greece mm-hmm. and she told her, her mom, our grandma. And she was like, why, why is she, he going to Greece? Why is he traveling? He doesn't need to travel. Uh-huh. It's funny, but it's like not funny. Cause she's like, and we not were like, living. what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> like, what, I don't even know. But then I you don't even know how to answer her. Then we're I like, thought to myself, mean? oh my God, she doesn't understand it. Right. Like, it's just like, that's how well, she that's is. How you have to have compassion because she grew up differently. Right. Right. So it's like, I, I said that to my mom too in that moment. Cause she was like, 
I think almost complaining that my grandma was not complaining, but just like speaking it. Yeah. And I said to her, I was like, if you think about your generation, mom, like you probably had the craziest transition from like being on the internet and being on social yes. to like not. Yeah. And you, what you're, what you have access to is so different. Like Mammy wouldn't know that traveling is fun. She doesn't see videos of Greece or photos right. of Italy or like understand why people are doing that. That's right. weird. All right. So we got off topic. So your childhood. Yes. Got it. Yep. So that's kind of how, so I, I always knew I wanted to just be this powerful woman. I knew I wanted to make change. I just knew I had a fire in my belly. It's a good way to explain it. Like I didn't know what my purpose was, but I knew I had a really intense purpose for Mm -hmm. being here. Um, and so I went to school and kind of got out of school and didn't really, I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Ultimately I, I got my, I was getting my master's to become, um, a therapist Interesting. Yeah. And so, because I was always... That makes sense. I was always a I, That totally person, makes sense. I get that. Right? Uh, and then Nicholas got sick. So life just... You know, I, I only had two classes before I would have had my master's in counseling. Mm-hmm. And How so old it, were you when you had Nicholas? I was 30. 30. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So then I didn't... Wasn't a therapist. Nicholas got sick. And I'm witnessing all these people. Sick with what? Nicholas had cancer when he was a baby, um, and we were at the hospital. We lived at Boston Children's Hospital for 188 straight days. And the interesting part about that in terms of like how I ended up getting to where I am now um, is most families stay in the hospital for about 45 days, and then they become outpatient clinics, outpatient um, patients through like the Jimmy Fund Clinic. You know, you start off at Boston Children's Hospital, you're still in treatment, and now you're going to the Jimmy Fund Clinic multiple times a week for several hours. Um, But we actually never went home because the kind of treatment that Nicholas had for AML was the more rare form of leukemia. Um, They don't let you go home because you can get so sick very, very quickly. So we stayed there. And so old was he? He was seven months old when he was diagnosed. Ashley. What signs did how he did show? You, like, how, how you, did you know? I don't get how that happens. Like, are you just born with yeah. it? He yeah. had cancer in utero, basically. How? I don't get it. Like, like some cell issue. Yes. So cancer is a is a cell that doesn't kill itself when it's supposed to. Right. Because it's not a right cell. It's not That's it's not so healthy. hard. I mean, like having a seven month old yeah. is and hard. Your first. Yes. Yeah. It was uh, You're not even totally healed yet. No. Like, oh, by the way, no, you're not. But interestingly enough, I don't know if I, if you know this story, but I had done a fundraiser for pediatric cancer before Nicholas got sick. Do you know that story? No. The so, irony. <laughs> it's insanity. So I was in the mortgage business right after. Yeah. So I, 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 oh, I knew that. Yes. Because of Joel. That's right. You knew yeah. Joel. So I was in the mortgage business and um, I was got pregnant when I'm maternity leave. And, you know, somewhere around month two, you know, Ari was, I think at the time in the marketing department um, at Cumberland Farms. Yep. And so he was coming home and he was talking about all these great things that happened at the office. And I was like, yeah, so Nicholas pooped today and we went to the park <laughs> and I hate this. And he was like what are you talking about? And I was like, I can't do this. I have to go back to work. (laughs) (laughs) And he was like, we really didn't, we talked about this and you're supposed to stay home. We agreed you were going to be a stay home mom. And at the time I'd gone through like two refine booms. So I was like, yeah, I was looking forward to like eating bonbons and spending time with my kids. But it just wasn't enough for me. I love that eating bonbons is your generation thing. My yeah, mom no, I says love that. bonbons. Is that like the chocolate covered ice cream? Yeah, I'm sorry. No, remember you could get bonbons the movies. At the movies. We're so yes. fast for that. that. Yeah. But I just love that that's Where like a are thing. bonbons? Dead. They're gone, I think. They're gone. Yeah. Should we? No. Make them? No. Okay. No. We I should think we're good. Be. Okay. We can get true, true, fru. Okay. We'll let them lie. Yeah. Have true. All right. Yeah, I was trying to be inventive. Fan. Yeah. Fuck the bonbons. Fuck the bonbons. Fuck those bonbons. So, yeah. So he was like, look you know, do something like, let's, let's meet in the middle. You want to go back to work. I want you to stay home. What about like philanthropy? And I was like young, right? I was 30 years old. I'm like, what the fuck is philanthropy? What are you talking about? And he's like, you know, like help people who are less fortunate. I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll look into it. So anyway, the long and short of that is I found St. Jude on the interweb. And, uh, I called them up and I was like, look, I want to have a, an event for you guys. How do I do it? It was so long ago that they sent me a VHS tape. Stop <gasps> it. Dude. 
Stop. You're old. I'm old. I'm kidding. So do you remember back? You probably didn't even know this, but we used to have these TVs where the V the VCR was attached to yeah. the TV. No, okay, no, you no, that I know. Of course, I so, used to have a white one that I stole from Rachel in oh, my room yeah, and would play it. 10 Things I Hate About You every day on And repeat. bring it on. <laughs> no, always. Yeah, totally. I love VHS. I, love I brought movies. VHS tapes to college. Oh, okay, all right. With so that exact that TV. Okay, perfect. We had like four movies, you know, like... You know which I brought movies. 100 VHS yeah. tapes to college. Oh, all, love this. all Disney. Continue. Okay, fair, fair enough. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know Ari gets up on the coffee table. And we had like 30 friends there. I mean, like, I think maybe we raised like $5,000. And Ari's Still like, good. yeah, especially for a bunch of 30 year olds. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ari's like, look, can you imagine how awful it would be if one of our children was sick? I think Nicholas was five months old at the time. Um, some of my friends didn't even have kids yet. And so this VHS tape, we played it a couple of times and it was just like all these like sick kids with cancer and we're all bawling. But the more cocktails we had, the more, you know, tearful. Cocktails and childhood cancer is not fun. Yeah. And so literally Nicholas is now he's sick, right? And I've been bringing him to the pediatrician and we agree like he's unwell, but we're not quite sure exactly what it is. We think it's a virus but he was getting a little worse every day, not a little bit better. And now that you have kids, you know, like they at least get a little better you know every the signs, day. Yeah. And he was getting worse. And so it was May 8th. This is anniversary. And I went to check on him in the morning and he was covered in bile. And so I scooped him up and I had just already known like the night before I put him to bed and I went into my bedroom, pulled the covers over my head. I was sobbing. And Ari was like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, Nicholas is sick. I think he has cancer. (gasps) And he was like, Ashley, like bite your tongue. You don't know what you're talking about. Like you're just a first time mom. Why did you think that? Because I knew. Did, Did you have psychic ability then? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that that's why. But I also wrote about this in my book too. For my entire life, from the time I was like 10, I used to daydream about my husband, my tall, dark, handsome husband, we were going to have a love that nobody could break. He was going to get sick and I was going to will him back to life with your husband was in my dreams. It was my husband. Ugh, it was your son, but it turned out to be my son. So in the book, I asked the question, like with the laws of attraction, did I bring illness to my son or I fucking hate that. Did I know did I just intuitively know it was going to happen? Did I manifest it? Right. Or did I, I predict this. it? I hate we had a whole episode we about don't, this. I don't do well with it those things. Tortured. That's a torture thought. I'm tortured thought. by that. Mm-hmm. That's a very hard thought. Yeah. Um, yeah. You definitely didn't manifest it. Right. <laughs> I think it was, part, it was part of my purpose. And, yeah. I, and how I know it was part of my purpose is because ultimately we ended up getting um, an experimental. Well, Nicholas ended up getting an experimental transplant at St. Jude. So we were originally treated at Boston Children's. We went to St. Jude after he was treated at Boston, where it turned out I was Nicholas's match, which is very, very rare. And I won't get into for the details. What? Blood what? for a for a transplant of his natural of my natural killer cells. So, in the long and the short of it, for people who are listening, to be a bone marrow uh, donor, it's one out of every four kids is a match to the other siblings, right? Parents are typically never a bone marrow match for a child. Interesting. But for the natural killer cells, it's called an K- a KIR mismatch. I don't remember what KIR stands for, but basically you want the donor to be a mismatch, not a match, so that your cells- They complete each other. No. My cells went into Nicholas's body and found his cancer as foreign and killed it. Got it. Because my cell- Are different. Right, are different. You had to do the bo- bone marrow? So it wasn't bone oh. marrow. It was, they took all my blood out. They kept the white, gave me back my red. And then they filtered out my natural killer cells from my white blood cells. Wow, that's insane. That's wild so, like, science. It's crazy. Uh, we were the fifth in the country to ever be, to ever do that. Yeah. So you think about like, okay, what was my purpose? I have so many purposes. One of them was to be Nicholas's mother so that I could save his life. I think. 100%. I mean, got, yeah, like, the I, chills I like 15 so. times. Mm-hmm. What a crazy story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then so when did one mission here. start? So one mission was born out of like, so we thought we were in the hospital and I just, again, I'm a helper. So I'm looking at all these families around me and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like they are poor. Even if they didn't start off poor, they're now poor. 
because they have all these co-pays, paying for hospital bills, um, trying to take care of their homes. Now one mom or dad or whatever isn't working. isn't working. So they're down half the income, but now the bills are going up. So, and then the hospital was barren. Like it was boring, barren place. So I had a, like a legal pad and I would just like, as a, I don't know if I was like journaling back then or what I was doing, but I just wrote down everything I hated and everything that I saw <laughs> that I needed to fix. It's really funny. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's your purpose because who else goes into a situation like that thinking about how they could fix it? Yeah. And so I mean, what a beautiful ending though. Yeah. Honestly. And he's okay. Nicholas is, yeah, he's going to be starting college in January. Right. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Wow. He would, they gave him a 50-50 shot. He would live six months. And he's 19. Wow. Four weeks, actually, yeah. So anyway, so that was the first part of the story, right? And then, but meanwhile, right, like how did Ashley get into the coffee business? How did Ashley support her husband while he ran Cumberland Farms? And how did I start One Mission? Well, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I want to talk about all of that. I think, and again, I talk a lot about this in my book, but I was driven by this little motor inside called anxiety and feelings of not being good enough and really and truly wanting to prove to the world that I was a good person because I was raised to believe that I wasn't. And um, so I was doing all of these things in my life. Like, I didn't know I was doing it for that purpose, but I was doing it so that I could prove to everybody that I was a good person. And I wanted people to like me. Again, I didn't know that at the surface level. But when you're told that you're not good enough all the time or when you're abandoned and left behind um, as a child, you inherently believe that you aren't worthy of love and that you aren't lovable and that you aren't good enough the way that you are. Um, And so it's just this thing that was like driving me. Now, anxiety can be good because it can give you fuel. But what happened for me was that anxiety took over Mm. and because my, I had had so much trauma, I was very sensitive. My psychic abilities were very heightened. And I could not not help anybody who was in trouble. It didn't matter what, whether they were... Well, you were convicted to help. I, I, had, I couldn't sleep. Yeah. And it was really because I was so fearful. Like, their trauma just re-triggered my trauma. And it's like I, a rotation. Mm-hmm. And so I was unable to trust that no matter what, they were going to be okay. You like couldn't settle it. I couldn't. And so I killed myself jumping backwards. Like, um, you know, think about all the portraits that you couldn't say no to at the end right before you, right? You know this person, you know that person. Well, I was always the person everybody called for help. Right. And so I- I try not to do that to you. Oh, I I hear it. No, no, no. I, I actually am very actively, when I hear a story, I actually don't reach out for that anymore. Like I've heard a few and I'm like, you know, you know what? It's not, it's not your role to like mm-hmm. save the world. But I think that that is the role you made. And so that made it. Do you what it like that like. role? Like, or like now looking back, like is you did that, you're still doing that? So I'm always going to be who I am. Yeah. But now I have boundaries. I didn't have boundaries before. Yeah. yeah. It's challenging. It's a huge, yeah. huge um, comfort to my nervous system to be able to, one, also the biggest thing is to just trust that I, to, to trust that I know that their plan is their plan. And Faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that like they're actually going to be okay no matter what happens. Yeah. That, that's a very hard concept to I digest. I can't save them from pain. Right. And I can't save them from suffering. Well, it's kind of like this rotation of like also karma manifesting. It's like if I help them, I'm helping me, but I, but you're not doing it not selflessly. But like if you give, then you're safe. But yes. it's like a bad, that's a bad place to be. It's like yep. a ping pong. Yep. But it doesn't, not to say that your actions aren't genuine and that you weren't wanting to help. Right. It's just like, it was like a subconscious you were, loop yeah. you were almost stuck in. Well, the beginning years of One Mission, I honestly felt like I was giving back to God for saving Nicholas. I understand that. I feel like it I was, understand. I think he, I thought he gave me one mission and it was so successful and I was meeting all these families because it was his way of saying, I did this for you. Now you do this for me. Showing you the way. No, I, now I feel like I understand that concept, but before. You're saying in the moment you didn't feel it that way. In the moment I felt like I was giving back to God because that's what he wanted me to do. Yes. Understanding. Like you're and yes. almost like kind of guilt kind of because you're like 
you gave me this. I need to do this for other people. Yes. yes. An exchange. Yes. And, and it was, a, I had, you know, I had a breakdown, hence the book is a lot about my breakdown. Um, and I remember calling my priest for last rites. When was the breakdown? So it was all those migraines. It was 20, that's what I 2019. Oh, that's what I thought. Um, I, was I remember so the vertigo. Unwell. Yes. The vertigo, the migraines, the vomiting. I couldn't leave my house. I it literally. It like your body was like purging. It the shut past. down. Yeah. My body shut down. Was your mom alive during this time? No. No. She'd already passed. She already passed. Yep. And, um, and so I remember calling my priest. He came and, and he's just such an amazing guy. And he just asked me the question, like, why do you feel like you have to help all these people? What an interesting question from a priest. Right? I find that to be ironic and well, very helpful. Well, of course, I started bawling my eyes out because I was like, oh, now he's going to see me. Right? And so he very casually explained to me that, like, that God's plan for us isn't always puppy dogs and ice cream. Yeah. And that's okay. And there's a whole purpose to everybody's plan. And I can't save people from their plan. And it's not even what God wants me to do. God doesn't want me to give back for saving Nicholas. He saved Nicholas for Nicholas. Because that was not Nicholas, for, not, not for me. For you. I think also, though, at a certain point, it's like when you're not in that loop, it's like, when do you just get to be? Mm -hmm. Just be. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you have a, also a beautiful life. Yeah. And it's just like at some point, like, you know, we change. You can only give so much without stripping down yourself. Yeah. And like, you have to know those boundaries to well, know when you're stripping yeah. that down. I think in a way though, one mission is the way to help as many people as you can. Well, you made like, it automated yeah. too. So Which it's like, nice. it lives on. Yeah. Whether, you know, no matter what you do, it yeah. lives on. It's just, you made that, but it doesn't always have to take your energy, your soul. Right. That's also another other way to say it is scalability. Totally. Like you, you delegate to elevate and you keep moving on, which yeah. is, you know, it's business. It just yeah. is the way it is. Business. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. <laughs> well, at the, at the tail end of one, my time at one mission, I was, you know, doing Reiki. Yeah. And I was giving it to free, free to the parents. And that's kind of how my spiritual practice and my spiritual job, if you will, um, became a thing because then they were telling their friends and family. So I would open up my practice to their friends and family, but then I would charge them. And so then my Reiki business became a business versus. I remember that when me. we talked about it in the conference room, that's now a sink yes. area. Remember? Yes, I do remember that. Yep. Yeah. And, um, I loved it at the time. Again, even though I was a spiritual person and on my path of healing, I didn't realize how damaged my nervous system truly was from all of the trauma. Yeah. And so me having all of those clients, and, I, and by the way, I got some of, and I wrote about this in my book too, some of the most intense stories. I'm talking like lifetime television for women stories that would show up in my office. And I was re-traumatizing myself every it, time. Andrew Tanner, mm, you know, trained yeah, me for, a, yeah, I know he told me. Yeah. He um, once said to me, he was like, if people really knew what Reiki was, I don't know if they'd offer it or do it. Mm -hmm. And I, I never understood that yeah. until literally right now when you just said that. Yeah. Because it's like, I think we offered Reiki at Parlor. Yeah. And we had to stop because it became too much of an intense energy exchange. Well, I think people expect something, and too. Yeah, they expect, like, it's, different like, level of healing. Yeah, like, I literally went to acupuncture yesterday, and he was like, I'm not Jesus, and I'm not a magician. Yeah. And he was like, so don't, like, look at me like that. And it just made me think of that, because, like, I think that's what happened with Reiki, is people were like, heal me. Yes. Make this person love me. And then uh -huh. tell you and, everything. Yeah. And which like, is really dumping on you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's so interesting, because I, again, I keep saying, I wrote about this in my book. I did. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier, the concept of like your path, right? And not everybody actually signs up for a earthly life of healing. Even though we're always, always healing, mm -hmm. some people don't know and they're not actively participating in that. And sometimes those are the people that come to you and lay on your table and say, heal me. I believe that. that's a tough conversation. It, you have to have people in your corner who are self-aware enough to tell you that you, like, I probably wouldn't have been someone to heal unless I had her. Yeah. I, I probably wouldn't. Like, I don't know what I would be like. Yeah. Um, her or my dad are like people that like are honest with me and like yeah. not like sugarcoat. Yeah. So I think I agree with you that I don't think people are always healing even though they're on that path. Yeah. 
or trying to, or understand that they need to. It might to. not be their dharma either to totally. Like that's yeah. just their life. Well, it, that's hundred percent. It's not what they came here yeah. to do. It, right. You know, ignorance is bliss. That is actually some people's yeah, lives. It's a form of ignorance. It, yeah. And not in a bad way. It and just not is. In a bad way. It, it just is, is. It is. And so those people, I swear they were coming to me. They were, ne- they weren't doing the homework I was giving them. And so every time they would come, I would give my everything to relieve their pain and suffering in that moment, which I mean, the jo- there was a joke at a cocktail party recently, like, Ashley, how many people have you healed? And I was like, we don't have enough time, right? Like, You literally don't have enough time. I literally don't have enough time to tell you. Some people, miraculous healings, and others just general. You also brought those people into your home, into your some own of, space. Some, only some clients. I okay. had an office in the one mission okay, space. Good. So only people like you I would ha- let come to my house. Yeah, I mean, your Reiki was powerful. Yeah. You told me crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. So um, so, so that part of my spiritual journey was really, I think, the beginning of the end and the beginning of my crash and burn. Well, I mean, when I see it from the plane, I think it all makes perfect sense. Right. Right. Like it's like you're depleted. Yep. Now you're going to add energy healing yep. with people who maybe aren't healing or are healing or want to or don't want to, but you're giving your all because you feel like you should. Yep. And you also feel like you can, and yep. you also feel like you have the capability to do that. That's a crash and burn 100%. recipe. Yeah. And, and I even think the crash and burn was part of your path. Oh, it absolutely was. I think you might've needed it. I needed the crash and burn. My family needed the crash and burn. Um, because I needed to heal myself. I needed to literally be broken down into like a hundred pieces so that I could actually see myself for who I was. From above. Yeah. How they long did it take you to get back up? Like after you felt like you crashed? Like many years. So uh, I was very sick 2019. Um, it started the end of the summer 2018. Believe it or not, I actually think I hit my head. So I had had multiple concussions in my life and I hit my head at the beginning of the summer, which I think if you know enough about CTE, migraines, vertigo, it's kind of like an ongoing issue when you don't heal your brain. Who knows why it started or where it came from? Either way, by the time Christmas rolled around of 2019, um, I was a shell of a human being. I distinctly remember seeing you in the salon and feeling awful because I felt like there was no solution I could give you that you hadn't tried. Yeah. I, I'm a solution giver. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's good and bad at the same time. But it's like, I saw in your eyes, you were like- Sick. You were just at a loss. Yeah. You were just like, I don't know what that, to do. Yeah. Like, I'm seeing this person. I'm going to try this. Yes. Like, you're a problem solver. It's just yeah. like, I think that was a hard thing. The vertigo, yeah. vertigo is really tough. It's awful. I had a period of vertigo leading up to my pregnancy and I think it came from extreme stress. Yeah. Because I was like, why aren't I getting pregnant? Yeah. And da, da 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 And I was like dizzy and I'm like falling yeah. over. And then it went away. Yeah. And I, when I healed. Yeah, totally. It's just very interesting. It's yeah. like if you listen to the signs of your body. 100%. The body keeps score. The body score. can talk to you. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the best books, The Body Keeps Score. Um, so ironically enough, uh, vertigo, migraines are actually in the same part of your brain as anxiety and stress. Mm. Well, that checks out. Yeah. That's exactly why most people experience dizziness when they have anxiety and they don't know they're having anxiety. They just feel dizzy. It's like your vagal. Yeah. It's like shutting down almost. Yeah. Yeah, Well, it's it's your brain and it's how it's processing the information. And if it gets on overload, it'll just go kaputs and the the signals aren't right. Right. Um, So, yeah. So I think that, you know, the, I found a pain coach who, I mean, I ultimately needed to like surrender to the fact that I had chronic pain. Right. There was, at that point, there was no getting rid of my migraines. Yep. I had them every single day. My longest migraine was 73 days. I mean, literally you open up your eyes. What? And boom, you have a headache. Yeah. That's horrible. That's, it's insanity. Terrible. terrible. How do you terrible. even function? How do you function? You, I you didn't. Don't. I wasn't functioning very well, although I was... You know, I wasn't having the spin, the spinning of the room and the and myself at the same time vertigo anymore, but I was still not well. It's funny. I, I put myself in your shoes just for a second just now, and I was like, "How would I? How do you handle that?" And my first response was my mom mm. in my head. So I thought to myself, "I would need my mom," and then I thought to myself, "Start rounding the story out. <laughs> that wouldn't be your response, right?" So it's kind of funny. I, I read a study once that said the people that live the longest or like have like the support system or like the people yeah. that are, it's like you didn't have, who who could support you in that, in that moment? Well, lots of people would say, oh, well, she had her husband, but I actually didn't at the time. And that's he another was in a whole other phase of his yeah, career. That's another part of the book too, um, which, you know, again, why did I get sick? What was this part of, it was part of uh, my 
journey, my life purpose, but also my husband's. Yeah, right? totally. I get that. Yeah. Well, it's like if you don't feel like a safety net, like if there, is, there isn't someone that can actually physically hold your weight yeah. for like a day, yeah. then I would imagine you crash. Yeah. Like it's like, cause where are you going to fall? You have no one to fall onto. Yeah. And if he couldn't support you in that moment, I understand yeah. what that, that imbalance. over Cumberland Farms there? No, no. He was already the president, oh, oh, oh. but the company was in the process of being sold, but we just couldn't tell anybody. Understood. So he was Hard. in the most stress of his entire that life. That sounds extremely stressful. But he also wasn't raised to be caring and loving and empathetic. Interesting. So um, he actually didn't even, I don't think if he was not selling the company, he would have known what to do with me. Right. I understand what you mean. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, I was so unwell and he was scared by it too. Of course. Like he also doesn't know like what to do. He did not. Well, he, he wasn't used to that from you either. So like that was a complete 180 for him. And I think boys are just different than girls in general. 100%. And when- like I sometimes wouldn't want Joe and I would want my mom or my yeah. sister. You know what I mean? Like yeah. husbands have a place in, in people's lives, but it's not always every bubble. Right? Yeah. Like sometimes I'm just like, you're not for me right now. I'm yeah. going to go get what I need from somebody else. Yeah. And I, I feel for you that you didn't have that. Yeah. No, I didn't have that. And I was also like secondarily tra traumatized by the fact that my husband wasn't showing up for me. Right. I, I think it was just like, it like sounds anger. dizzy. Like, there's, like I'm dizzy thinking yeah. about that scenario. I think like your as body you brought me there, yeah. rejecting everything you were doing. Yeah. Like I think it was like, you are focusing on way too many people. So and I need you for myself. Yeah. I've never seen that in a physical reaction though. I guess maybe I have just not noticed it. I just it. think you just don't know. You just don't realize You don't correlate. It. She's just spiritually bound so she can correlate. And right. now looking back, looking you can back. say it. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, 2020, I started feeling comfortable going out for dinner. <laughs> like not the irony. Well, I was like afraid to leave my house and now you have irony cause you couldn't yeah. go out. <laughs> um, well, and then, so I was really just, COVID was a huge gift for me because I wasn't ready to really go out any place. Um, and I was getting better to the point where I could function every day, but yeah. I wasn't forced to leave my house because we couldn't. And that's when I wrote the book. Like it just kind of by came accident, out of you. by accident happened. Yeah, um, I had no plan on writing a book, um, but I just detailed like my whole life and put it all down on paper. And being that helped me put myself back together. It like probably healed you because you were like talking about yeah, it. Well, yeah, it, sharing like, my story. You were people were like, and people probably related or still relate to your story too. And yeah. that always makes you feel not alone. Yeah. Well, I look at journaling as a form of my own therapy. Yeah. Like I, when I journal or like I just let my pen go and yeah. like I'm in touch or like I'm having one of those like really weird moments mm -hmm. and it's flowing, I feel like I read it back to myself and I'm able to like analyze myself from the outside. Yeah. So I bet you that book was so cathartic for you because yeah. you were able to like almost the whole, your whole life up until that point. Yeah. Empty it. Yeah. Put it on paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then carry on you know it's also nice for people to know your story because you have so many people close to you so it's like they're like weaning off of you to get help but like you're dealing with your own thing and it's nice for people to know that you didn't just cut like these things weren't just given to you totally yeah, and I a lot of work that went into it it wasn't just like here's Cumberland Farms and here's a great husband and here's yeah. a child and here's yeah. these businesses like it wasn't like that no. yeah let's talk about Cumberland Farms sure I find it interesting like yeah. huge business huge business weren't you responsible for the coffee <laughs> yeah, That's please. Like, is that true? Please talk thing. about that. Is that true? Because I I say that. So yeah, you should say that because we'll so, say it. So my husband's my husband Ari's fam grandparents started Cumberland Farms. I actually <gasps> never worked. Like, there. was it a small business? Wait, how they started? I'm so interested. It's milk delivery. What? what? So they would deliver milk to like the homes around where they lived in Cumberland, Rhode Island. Oh, Cumberland Rhode Farms. Island. Yes, I never. Yeah. Correlated that. I yeah. thought it was a well because we didn't always have them in Massachusetts. Now that I'm thinking about the it, right? first store was in Bellingham, Mass. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. So keep milk. going. Keep so going. they were delivering milk, um, and I'm, I might get some of these details wrong, but my father-in-law was one of eight children, and the boys were like doing the milk delivery and in milking the cows. And <laughs> one of them, I forget which one, basically came home one day and was like, "This is ridiculous. We're driving to everybody. Why don't we make a store and have them come to us?" <laughs> so it. then it was like milk, cheese, bread, something like that. Uh, and the first store was in Bellingham. And then it just continued to go from there. Um, and Very so, funny how it evolved. Oh, it's, it's funny that it wasn't like a grocery store. 
but yeah. it kind of was, I guess, and it, gas. Well, it's yeah. interesting because when you look at Cumberland Farms now and what you guys turned it's it into, I mean, it has food. Like it has. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that was Ari. So, um, so when we first met, I, I, I'm from Framingham, right? So I, knew I Cumber- didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Framingham. Like Framingham high school. Yeah. No, like I, I didn't know that. You're lying. No, no I, I swear. I didn't know that. Wait, what are okay, you talking about? Framingham. Okay. So anyway, so I'm from Framingham. And so when I met Ari, um, he would talk about Cumberland Farms. Like it was like the best thing since sliced bread, but we, I grew up all thinking it was a franchise. And it, it, so I just thought it was a franchise. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, bro, like, cool. You have a couple of stores, like settle down. <laughs> and so where'd you I'm meet like, him? So I worked at Finally Michael's, which was a restaurant. It's actually a CVS now in Framingham on Route 9, next to Stop and Shop. And he used to come in all the time. And he asked me out one day. You mean like the one on Temple Street? Yeah. That, what? That's, that's my CVS. Yeah. Wow. It's so fun to be like hot and someone asks you to like date them. Yeah. He interviewed <laughs> me first. Like we could do a whole like podcast. Just at a store. We should do a whole podcast. Ari should come in and we can do a husband Has and wife Has that ever podcast. happened to you? Has anyone come to you in a store and been like, hey, you want me to take you out? I mean, like really creepy, weird men, yeah. but not like anyone that's like a candidate. Right. That's the only saying. person that ever did that to me was Michael Shifter. Well, I'll see. Here yeah, you are. That's all I ever needed. It did happen. Yeah. So anyway, um, once I realized that he was like, you know, had this like love affair with Cumberland Farms, I was like, bro enough and he was like Bruh. what are you talking about he's like my, my my grandparents started the company we own the whole thing and i was like oh hi like, oh yeah, yeah, ding, 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 got now it i understood. understood and that's when i left left ari <laughs> what <laughs> like you broke up with him i broke up I with fucking him. Broke are you up. good bro seriously i was like oh no 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 i can't do that <laughs> wait was i just, love you for that though he was like so mature we're the same age but he was so mature like, like different phases of your life now he was like like my, my friends called him grandpa i he love drove a, a lincoln I town car love a grandpa love he was like he didn't party he never did drugs i like him he was like any work straight he was in in it to win it and once i realized i was like uh, it reminded me of like um dallas remember the tv show dallas oh my god you guys are so much younger than i am anyway i know even steven I, don't even know that. So anyway, um, I realized like, oh my God, these people are like legit. Like I don't, that's not who I was. I wasn't born wealthy. Intimidated or yeah. just, yeah, I was intimidated. Like, uh, like, they I'm are not legit. They are never going to accept me. I don't even want to do that world. I get that. Like a rejecting before you like even enter. You're like, too you know serious what? for just, you. No. Just too much. Like, I get that. I just pictured this like glamorous before the Kardashians, before the Kardashians were even a thing. I pictured the Kardashians, right? I was like, oh, I can't do that. They're not gonna, they're not gonna accept me. I don't know how to do that life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I broke up with him, and we didn't. We broke up for like eight, nine months, something like that. We worked at the same gym, and so I'm like on the treadmill one day, and I'm running, and he, he's like, he was like a little nerd. He walks in, and I'm like, oh my god, he's so stinking cute. Wait, that's and how Mike too. and I started dating. At exactly the at the gym. At the gym. Oh my god. Huh. Keep going. Yeah. So anyway, I called him up, and I was now I was in the, I was in the mortgage business at that point. And do you so need I, a mortgage? Yeah, I cold called him because <laughs> we agreed on our first date that we were going to stay together, even if we were going to stay friends no matter what, and we didn't. And that was my my fault because I wigged out and I fucking freaked out, and I was like, I gotta go. So anyway, I called him up. We went back out on a date. We both had significant others or boyfriends at the time. Well, I had a boyfriend. He had a Cheater. Uh, yeah. Slug. And uh, so we were out for dinner and he was like, look, like, I want to know, like, why you're calling me after all this time? I love that he went. Oh, he went. He pushed his plate forward and everything. Well, you also ditched him. So he's probably like, he ignored my call. Was Bruce. And he was going to, he wasn't going to pick me up. <laughs> so I called him and I was like, hey, you know, blah, blah. I got him to say yes to the date. And then he, and then like days went by and he didn't like call the confirm. So I called him back and I was like, hey, like, were you going to blow me off? <laughs> And he was like, 100%. And I was like, no, dude, you're not blowing me off. You're picking me up tomorrow at 7. So anyway, he pushes his plate forward. And he's like, you know, why are you calling me after all this time? And I was like, well, do you want me to be honest? And he was like, yeah. I was like, because I missed you. And we said we were going to be friends. So even if we don't go any further, like, I want to be your friend. And he was like, huh. And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? And he was like, huh. well, when we get married, will you live on my family's property? And I was like, wait, what? 
What? What? I was like, what kind of question is that? I want to live on the property. He knew from day one that he wanted to marry me. What's the property like? It's like, it's a, it's a long story. Can you take us? Yeah. It's where I live. That's the property? It's, yeah, it's a huge property. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm going to come over. You should come over. Okay. Well, her house is fucking phenomenal. So anyway. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. So, so Ari's now right at Cumberland. So bringing it all full circle. So he's at Cumberland. I'm now running the nonprofit. Picking and, the coffee. And I am in the mortgage business, right? Right? So that's, this is that time frame. Yep. And I was a Duncan girl. I actually gave this speech to the National Convenience Store Associations. Like, I didn't know that was an association. Yeah. To like a huge, like they were like 3,000 people there and I told this story. And so he'd be like, well, why don't you just stop at Cumberland and get, ga- at, at Cumberland and get coffee? And I'd be like, because your coffee sucks. It's fucking gas station coffee. I'm not drinking your coffee. So he, I was like, you need a, you need real coffee. You got to turn this place around. You got to get some real coffee. So for months, he and his team were scouting out beans. Mm-hmm. So he would come home like all proud and he would have me taste test this cup or this cup, this cup or this cup. And I would always pick Duncan. And so he couldn't find it. So one day he comes home, gives me another taste test. And I was like, this one. That's the Duncan one, right? He's like, no, yes. He's like, I got it. What is I it, New it. England or something? No, no, I don't even know where they get it now from. But we literally got like, they're like, it's from a different country. Yeah, it's not from like, around. It's here. good coffee. Yeah. yeah, the beans. So, yeah, I um, love the setup though. Oh my gosh, and the cost. Make it your way. Yeah, make it. You know, because every that's a problem with Mike went there every morning and bullied me before actually before saying I knew why you. do you spend coffee every morning no, he was like coffee. your starbucks five dollars this no, 99 cents we're yeah. like cumberland farms people like my dad only gets gas for his entire company at cumberland farms yeah. he has like a smart system pen. smart pen. yeah mm-hmm. we yeah. i used in high school i used to fill up my tank at cumberland farms yeah, so did i on him yeah it was great that's nice yeah good for you thank you i used to pay for cents and pay for gas in cents in like a little ziploc bag when I was in high school at Cumberland oh, Farms. Oh, and I was like, what? Oh, God, I was like, well, I got I into, imagine a, I got into my first car accident right in front of a Cumberland Farms, the one right around the corner. It used to be from here where the nail polish yeah. place oh, is. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I actually walked into a Cumberland Farms store to call my father to tell him I got into a car accident, and then I ended up marrying the guy whose family owns Cumberland Farms. That's, f- yeah. that's very odd. It's foreshadowing. So Are you close with your dad? I know that's very. random. Yeah, you, okay. Yeah, 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 he does sound... He does sound baths. Yeah, yeah he I works, remember he said that. Uh, he's in facilities, like a head of facilities at, at Hudson Public Were Schools. your parents together? No, my parents got divorced so, when I was five. Five. Yeah. So that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so I think, you know, like the story kind of just kept unfolding of like yet another thing to do. And you asked me originally, like, well, how does one person do all of these things? Um, I love building. Like I love You're fueled people. by it. I love people. I mean, hi, that's what soul busy means? Yeah. It's literally what this podcast is about. It's yeah. like, that's a question I'm asked every day is how can you do it all? Yeah. And honestly, the answer is, the first answer is boundaries. Yep. And that's, that's you already hit on that. Yep. It's like, how can you, you have to figure out what works for you, mm-hmm. but you also have to be fueled from your soul yeah. on what you're doing. You have to and be you passionate. Are. Yeah. You just have to be passionate about it. Like, it's like... Pe- my friend was telling me yesterday, it was like her first day back from work after she just had her first kid. Aww. And she's going to work. She's like crying, crying, crying. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know how you, she was asking me about you and like how you go to work every day. I'm like, Rachel is so passionate about her job. It's like, it's different. I yeah. fucking love it, my like, job. It's just like you, when you love it and you want to go, like it's, it's not a chore. Yeah. No, I'm not sad. And I have to say, I don't really think about my kids during the day. I yeah. don't mean that negatively. I just yeah. like, I'm like, I'm embedded in my, like right now, I'm like, yeah. I'm in this conversation. I'm loving right. it. I'm present. I'm here. Like. You have to be that yeah. in order to do all the and things And you can you love do. both. Like you can love your kids and your life yep. and all your businesses. Mm-hmm. I want to get into your franchising though. Okay. I'm interested. Yeah. Cool. I just wanted to make one point that oh, I find oh. very interesting of oh. this story up until Make the now. point. Well, like Cumberland Farms, like a huge business. Like mm-hmm. you also could have just sat pretty and like chilled. Yeah. Right? Like I, I find, That is true. I just think it's like commendable. You know, like you you had that choice. Yeah. That path was there. Well, I didn't ever work for the company, but I think Ari would and he's told uh, tells people a lot that like I helped him. Of course. 
Right. Well, like we made a man a is not a man ideas. without a woman. You have the ideas. Yeah, we made a lot of decisions together. Like he would come home and be like, okay, this logo, this logo, this color, this color. Oh, to me, I consider you that you did work there, whether you were on the yeah. payroll or not. I, yeah. I see it as like energetically you yeah. were on the payroll. Yeah, there was, I mean, it was my idea to come up with President's Club. You yeah. know, no, it no, was, no. The, yeah, that's, it was so, I loved it. And, you know, we're, to be in business now, I mean, we could do a whole podcast on being in business with your with your husband, with your partner. I'm, I'm sure my mom would love to discuss that. Oh my God, that'd be so fun. I would love to do that with her. Um, there's not a lot of couples that successfully do that. And I can honestly tell you, it's not that easy. No, it's definitely, I watch it firsthand. It would be yeah. hard, not easy for me to like be sexual with my husband if 100%. we were in work together. Yeah, like if you're I, pissed at something they did, but then yeah. like he's on top of you, it's like, it's kind of Oh yeah, no. No, yeah. not for me. I don't mean sit pretty like that. I mean, like, everybody has an option, a choice of, like, how they're going to handle their day. Like, you, like, Cumberland Farms is a, a successful business. Like, yeah. you could have chosen to, like, not be in a beach in Aruba. You could have been doing a million yeah. things. And, like, yeah. you are still fueled by your passion, yeah. by everything you do. Why? Your- because that's just who I am. Because yeah. it's, it's your core. Make It's your genetic makeup. Yeah. It's just, like, that's who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was never uh, somebody who just sat around and... Did nothing. Did nothing yeah. anyway. Well, you don't eat bonbons. You don't sit and do uh, bonbons. No bonbons. No bonbons. Um, although I, I think at one point I thought it would have been really, really cool to do that. But then that little fire is just drives you, you know, if you are connected to your soul. And from a, I mean, I used to, in high school, we were meditating. We were wearing crystals in high school. So, you know, me and my peeps, like we were into that whole thing. That's cool. So we knew I was already starting the connection. Yep. I was going to psychics. Connection I was going to, to healers very, very young. That's very early too for not having like so much exposure to internet and whatnot. And like oh, having like the types of books that are out now. We didn't like, even have phones. Yeah. There wasn't even a flip phone. Yeah. LOL. Yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. 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 Even, this was even before pagers. <laughs> so that's how <laughs> my I God, love, my dad I love, used to love those myself. pagers. My dad had Nextel. Yeah. Oh, Next so like, yeah, I mm-hmm. love those things. I, me too. The um, yellow. Yeah. Yeah. With the black button. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so I think that it was just something I was, I was driven to do. I am, you know, we talk a lot now, like uh, with our, with our car washes and um, with the coffee stands, like my eyes are like globes and this happens no matter where I am. Like I see everything. That's why I actually think they like are like they're globes. Globes. no like literally sometimes when I look in your eyes like I see like there's another world there's like something else happening there oh, like and I it's happened this whole podcast Carly says it too but like I'm looking at you and I see like there's I feel so like much. you think things about me that's what I what I'm thinking there's so <laughs> I hate it what do you think she's thinking about nothing I like feel like she things? knows my things Oh my God. Like There's only things? two people that's ever but happened with my But she's not always lifetime. tuning in like that. She's right. just like having listening. a conversation. I think she's just listening. Yeah. She's just focused on yeah. what you're saying. She's not like no, thinking, she's... I know what's going to happen to Carly tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think she does. She doesn't. I mean, unless well, you do. No, no. <laughs> I, I, try, I, I try to only tune in either when I'm asked or right. when I feel called for it. But anyway, um, so my little attention to detail, like... You know, I take pictures. I'm at a Starbucks in the bathroom. Like, I see what's happening in the corners of the f- floors and of the ceilings. Oh, I'm the same way. I really am. I, I'm and attention how, to detail. That's how I ended up getting so involved at Cumberland. Because I would go to the stores and I'd be, like, taking pictures yeah, of but things. But that's a job. Like, but you also mm-hmm. have such a, like, strong opinion that's right. respected. So it's like, right. I would, if I were Ari, is it Ari? Ari. I always Are say you Ari. Are saying either I, one? I say Ari. That's fine. It's Ari. Do you have, like, an, an accent? His name is Aristides. So his is name is Ari. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. So he's, his name is really Ari, but because nobody could ever pronounce that, Ari. he introduces himself as Ari. Because okay. he just, it's easy. You're not originally Greek though, are you? No, Did Italian. you have a Greek wedding? Yeah. Oh my God. Cool. It was so awesome. People threw the money at you? Yeah, money, plates. I just, it's cool. It was cool. <laughs> I went to a very Greek wedding the other day. And I, last the week. The crowns, everything's last in Three weeks ago. I don't know. It's crazy though. So Anyways, I don't remember what I was saying. So yeah, so she was just closing the loop on Cumberland because you wanted to go to Seven Brew. But, um, you know, I, I don't. I, I don't even know what it would be like to do to not be involved and to right. not be a boss. Yeah, I love that. By the way, the hardest part of being a franchisee is not being the boss. Interesting. So you're not the boss of the franchises. You bought fr- so okay. So hold on, let's transition. So Cumberland Farms is sold. Correct. You guys Farm. sell the business. Sold the business. Congratulations. Thank you. Are Beautiful. you happy with that? Um, yes and no. I mean, there was concerns about the the. Um, 
security of, of, of the gasoline business. And that's where the, where the majority of the money came from, right? You know, plug in your car nowadays. Um, on oh, I story. never thought about that. Yeah. That's an um, interesting you know, If you make your margins on the gas, you right. don't make your margins on the Twinkies and right. the coffee. Right. Um, or Twix. Or the Twix, yeah. Or sour watermelon patches. Are you I'm good? Like, oh, yeah. I think she's hungry. Or, I'm hungry. Very <laughs> <laughs> hungry. <laughs> She psychically knew that I was extremely hungry. I mean, I just knew. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so I think it, you know, it was very, very, very sad for my husband. It's I hard. always wondered that. Like, it must be, because well, it's he so built personal. it from the ground with his family. That's well, hard. Yeah. Well, his, he didn't, so, so he didn't build it from the ground. He was given a gift from his family to run the business that he ultimately turned from like a cute little rock that's beautiful to a piece of gold. Right. That's how yes. I understood it, yes. right? Like the transformation of what he did with the company, you know, smart pay, the stores, yeah, the new funny. logo, That's everything. That's what always bothered me about when, I don't know if you remember this, when people shit on Kylie Jenner for being like the first billionaire or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, I think you and I were aligned on this. Like yeah. I like made a post and I was like, you guys are all shitting on her saying she was handed something, yeah. but you can be handed something and do nothing with it. <sighs> You can be handed something and yep. drive it to the ground. Bitch yeah. builds she, a legacy. Just because literally. someone is given something. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll say the, you know, actually I'm not going to say that name. But like, you can be handed something and yeah. not do well with 100%. it. 100%. It doesn't mean you're just automatically successful. Yeah, so agreed. like, he turned it into gold 100%. He yes, deserves that he credit. Did. He does. And he does. And I gave him a lot of credit for that. I remind him often. It's a sad, he misses his people badly. And, you know, he probably knew, I think there was, when we sold another 600 plus stores, he knew every manager by name. Wow. He That's wrote very impressive. anniversary letters personally with his own hand to every manager. That's wow. beautiful. Yeah. And That's really so something. And so he, he can't go into the stores because he gets very, very sad. Really? And plus it's not, it, you know, they're, it's not being very well run right now. And that's sad for him. Can too. you get it? back like how does that work we, at this point you you just don't it would just be too much just be going backwards in time it'd be going backwards in time and it would be another 10 years of fixing it's the third person after I've you heard, just right, got it yeah about selling that they like had a hard time after selling yeah that's you're the well, third it was his person. whole identity yeah 100 percent. yeah I get that I mean this man was like up on stage at Foxwoods with 15 1700 people shooting t-shirts out of a gun, pyrotechnics, people screaming his name, Ari, like waiting in line to meet him. What? Like, oh yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. He, he, he gave his heart and soul to those employees and they really, really respected and admired him. And can you imagine what that would feel like to just go from that to no. like literally slamming on the brakes and no, having because no employees? Forget about all the sm smoke and mirrors you just described. Well, not smoke and mirrors, like the excitement you just yeah. described. I don't know how I'd fill my time if I didn't have like this passion or this purpose. Totally. Like I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy having something to do. Yeah. Well, that's how we got Seven Brew because I got yeah. bored. So let's talk about, so <laughs> we sell Cumberland Farms and then you guys go into the franchise business. So well, now, we started with the car wash business. So how many car washes do you own? Just two. Two. Okay. Sorry, three. Sorry. Three car washes. Yes. Where are they? Uh, Cranston, Rhode Island is the first one. Uh, Wareham, Mass. Uh, where's where the other two are? Get so right next to Framingham? what it is. Trying for framing him. Yeah, I'd like I love Waterwoods. I was, oh, that's where I saw it. Yeah. We got off on the exit and we got, there was traffic on the way to the Cape one day yeah. and we went off and we were like, oh my God, Waterwiz. And I was like, wow, Waterwiz seems so much cooler when I was younger. And then the next thing down was yeah. rain and I was like, oh my God, yeah, it's rain. Yeah. That's my whole story. There you go. Continue. Good, good. Yeah. So we decided we were going to do the car wash uh, businesses first. So that's what we did. Um, and they're, they take a long time to build. Because you have to find the imagine. land, you, the buildings take a long time. And meanwhile, of that process unfolding, um, Ari had a connection to Jimmy John. And Jimmy John was a big investor in Seven Brew at the beginning. And so uh, Jimmy John brings us Seven Brew. And, you know, we're in Florida. We're, we're basically in lockdown. But the big joke is, like, Ari was bored. And he was, like, fell in love with the brand. You know, it's a really, really, really fun, energetic brand that's purpose is to cultivate kindness. We need that in I framing know, him. Dude, it I is know. bullshit. Like we need it. I know. Can you bring Wait, it? You're saying cultivate kindness in the car wash? No, or seven, seven brew. brew. Oh, okay. Seven brews mission. Got is it. To like, why are they kindness. always like in the South? Because it's, well, it started in Arkansas. Yeah. And so they kind of started there and then worked their way out. So I 
think right now they're around 300 stands um, total. And, you know, why do you call it a stand? It's a, it, because it's a coffee stand. You don't go into it. It's not a shop. Oh, it's a drive through. Double drive through. Oh, interesting. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder how does that affect like real estate to change what you what you're looking for? Uh, yeah, you need uh, the That's... space to do the to, to, to do the turnaround, um, and it's kind of think of think of it like Chick Fil A. I love Chick Fil A. Yeah. Like without to think about the Chick Fil A, without understood. The Got it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. How's it going? It's going really well. Um, our first stands were in Florida, uh, and you know. Florida is a unique market because um, I call it like easy living in Florida. Yeah. There's a lot of everything and they do very well in the Midwest and, you know, in that area because um, there isn't a lot of cool flashy things there. Yeah. So they're like, oh my God, what is this? What is this? Seven There's brew. like a Starbucks on every corner. Correct. And they also love sweet things in the Midwest. Like nobody's really like diet conscious out there. Right. So, I mean... That's America. Yep. Give America them some more you. sweet coffee. Yeah, and sweet tea. Well, I was looking mm. at the menu of the Seven Brew, and it's just so cool. 20,000 flavor combinations. Yeah. yeah. It's tree. very interesting. Yeah. How, how the hell does one even get to 20,000 flavor combinations? Who knows? The menu is a, a big test. That's tea. wild. It's like a 10-hour Have test. Have you had the coffee? Oh, yeah. You like it? I don't. I drink black coffee. Because once I... Same. I, yeah. I drink black coffee. Yeah. I love black coffee. Yeah. I, I get a little Said disturbed no with the inter... I don't... I like the taste of coffee. Yeah. I don't... I will take a flavor as a treat, but like I don't necessarily want it. Yeah. And I don't drink caffeine. What? Yeah. Why? I don't drink caffeine because... I don't get that. Well, it's like my nervous systems are just oh, a little sensitive. I don't know it, now it, either. It. I like it kind of. You like not drinking it. I have not drink it in a little while. I feel anything from drinking it anymore. Uh, well, between I'm like the numb. shits and the in the uh, like in the crash and burn after the caffeine, I just I do better with that. I put electrolytes in my coffee. I love electrolytes, so I get the same buzz. But so okay, very interesting story. I'd mm-hmm. like to talk a little bit about spirituality and being a psychic because yeah. that you are. Yes, <laughs> like very. Now here we are. What do you, when I always wanted to know, like, what do you see? What do you hear? Do you hear voices? Do you like, do you find that your psychic abilities have grown with time they've, as you get they've older? They've morphed with time. Um, I, it's always a knowing right. for me. So I don't see things. I just know them to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if I have my hands on, it's different. So if I have my hands on somebody like in a session, then I'll see things like movies. Okay, like a series of yeah. scenes. And they won't ever really make sense to me. So you kind of have to trust your own chops like at the beginning and and not be afraid to ask the questions. Like yeah. I see a man in a blue shirt and he has a green bow tie and curly. You're doing that to me. Curly I want that. brown hair. Like he's here, he's holding a red box. What what does that mean to you? And you know what I mean? So right, you like, have to repeat it and then you have to not be afraid. You sound crazy. Right. And then like see what they say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's other times where like I've seen you guys upstairs and been like, come here. How are you feeling? Are you okay? What's happening? You know what I mean? Because I knew something I hate was happening. You. You mean like that. when you put me into labor? Well, you asked me to. <laughs> yes. I know. But thank God you did because if Sadie got any bigger, my God. Yeah. I don't know what that delivery would have looked yeah, like. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the, it's just, it's, it's always like when I was little, little, like 10 years old, I used to see my, well, sorry, he died when I was 10. So 11, 12, I used to see my grandfather all the time, all the time. Like in front of you or yeah, in your like head? He, I would be walking like by my, in my grandparents' kitchen and I would look up the stairs and he'd be at the top of the stairs tied in his bathing suit. So you and see I, dead people. I mean, I can't. Yeah. yeah. You see. Dead. What's that from? <laughs> Sixth Sense. Yeah. You I know he's in the closet. He goes, I see dead people. I yeah. used to do that to me. She used to do that to me when I was little. She would on her hands and knees come into my I room, would crawl into her and room. She'd and she'd say, I I see No, I would say, I, No, I would say, I'm going to kill you. She used to do that to me when I was yeah. little. Um, I, and where I'd pretend I was like a robot or That's why I always used to sleep with the door closed. I oh hated when she came in. It was definitely a weird That's thing weird. looking back that I would do to her, for sure. It's really You're <laughs> older, right? Yeah. I am, yeah, yeah. yeah. Three years. I definitely don't have the ability you have, but I definitely have that knowing sometimes. Mm-hmm. And if like, I'm only if I'm in tune with myself or my third eye, can I, and like, I bring myself to the point where I understand that. But I, I have ability when it comes, it's going to be so weird, text messages. Yeah. I always know when someone's texting me. Oh, interesting. I have Ashley, that sometimes too. Like literally I'm going 10 out of 10 times. Oh, wow. Like I'm holding, okay, nine out of 10. I'm holding my phone. I'm like, oh, one, two, 
coming in. No way. I don't know why or how, but like it you is know very someone's un- texting. You don't know who it is. No, I know who it oh, is. You know like who it is. it's not that I like saying that they're texting me. It's that like they, they pop into my mind. Yeah, I'm starting to think about them, and then the text message comes into my oh, phone. Cool. Like I'm on their their wavelength yeah, yeah. or something. Oh, yeah, for I sure. I hate that. You are for sure. That's very like odd. Like but that. by the way, we all have abilities. I agree. I mean, like if it. It, if somebody feels like they have zero, they would just have to do more training. Exactly. But every single person, because we're all energy beings, and and even like that description I just gave you of the guy, and that's just energy. Yes. Right? And that's how psychics get it fucked up, by the way, sometimes, right? You'll be like, oh, I went to the psychic. I don't know what they're talking about. This person doesn't exist or this hasn't happened yet. And they're just getting the time wrong. But the energy system of that person, place, or thing exists. They just may have messed it up on the time. Well, if right. they're legit, yeah. Well, even if even if they're not, even if they are legit, they can still mess up the 100%, time. A hundred percent. No, I'm yeah. I'm agreeing with you. Oh, like, right, I'm right, saying right. like it, some aren't legit. Like they're yeah. just scams. But like for sure, for sure. But there's so I yeah I recently went to one and it was very interesting. You have to be open. Yeah. Too. Also, like you can't just be like yeah. Well, I'll, I'm not going to tell you anything and I'll wait and see. Yes, if- because if your energy's closed, <laughs> then they can't read your energy. <laughs> well, yeah. If but like yeah, if, I'm not going to tell if you, you go, anything. If you go into it as a skeptic and you're like, I'm going to test this person, it has to be. I think a back and forth. Well, not necessarily because if the other person, if the if the psychic, quote unquote can just do their job, they can still read it. But the reading will be way better if the right. other person's open. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, exactly. You'll get, you'll get even more, more information right. and it'll be more meaningful. Before I got married, you did Reiki on me and mm-hmm. you were like, you were like, there's a pin. I don't know what to tell you, but there's like a pin that's going to come like your grandfather. It's like, oh. you're sending a pin. And like a pin? Like uh, you a, said a pin. Yeah, okay. you just randomly said that. And on the day of my wedding, oh, my grandma's, pin. no, no, no. Yes, I was given a lion pin the day of my wedding, but that's not what it was. My, I don't know what she is to me. I would say like my, our cousin, our ex- extended cousin, uh-huh. she's older. She had a pin that had like six diamonds in it. And the day of the wedding, she said, I want you to wear this to walk down the aisle. Oh, and wow. I pinned it to my dress and I was like, there's the pin. <laughs> and it was very odd. I mean, like it was like, not odd. It was a synchronicity. It was just a yeah. gave you that. Ann. Oh, oh, oh. I, and I lost it in the middle of the wedding. Oh, no. It's very old and very expensive and, sh- and somebody found it and said, I think you dropped a pin, but I wasn't wearing the pin. So the fact that they even knew the pin came oh, from my wow. dress was very odd. And the whole thing was just weird. It was like that's my cool. grandfather was, that is me. really weird. Yeah. I mean, that types of stuff. Like I had a, um, a friend who asked, you know, to have a session with me and she was, had just recently been diagnosed. And so I did, it was over zoom with her and, and I can see her in a waiting room with like all these pictures above her with geometric patterns, right? So, but if that doesn't really mean anything, right? So I'm like, so then I have to ask, okay, well, what's the purpose? So I ask the universe, like, what's the purpose of you just telling me that, showing me that? Right. So, okay, I get the message. So I tell her, you're going to know that you're in the right doctor's office when you see the geometric shapes, and so sure enough, two weeks later, and I forget, like I forgot the pin story. I forget people's stuff. Of course, stuff, you're so present yeah, and how could you get involved in so many people's things? I, I wouldn't want to hold on to it anyway. Right. It's not, not for me. Right. Um, and so she called me and she was like, you know, I just want to give you the update, blah, blah, blah. This is the doctor team I went with, blah, blah, blah. And um, his office was full of uh, pictures with geometric shapes. That's how I knew I was in the right place. So like, it's really trippy. And sometimes... You know, the, the more you do it, the, the less you are surprised yeah, yeah. yourself, but like, it's still kind it's of It's cool. a part of you. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah. How does spirituality shape how you are as a businesswoman? Like, do you ever find that like your spirit, spirituality conflicts with something you have to do business-wise? Oh my God. Well, being in business with my husband, who's <laughs> not necessarily like in on the plan of mm-hmm. this healing path, he's getting closer, but, um, you know, we'll be in team meetings and he'll like, rah, he'll, he like rages and my whole body's like breaking out in hives. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I'll send him a text message like WTF, what are you doing? And we'll have a back and forth about it. Like he'll be mad and I'll be like, well, I can't be on your team. I, I, I if I, if this was my job, I would quit. Right. Like we can't, I can't do that. They're, these people are human beings, you know? Um, so it's an o- ongoing thing with us. Do you use the language like 5d? Is that how you I, would view I'm not, it? I don't use that language. I just talk. It's like interrelational therapy. I think he'd be annoyed if she said that. Oh my God. He'd be like yeah, five year. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean between me and you. Oh, um, to be honest with you, 
for me, 5D, I don't really even know what people who use that term are referring to, but for me, it's like being plugged in to the universe. That's what it is. Okay. It's basically like 3D is what's physically happening here. Yeah. Being in five, 4D is hovering and 5D is being above. Oh, cool. So basically in that scenario, my analyzation is that you were in 5D, he was in 3D and you were saying to him, these are human beings. You have to see it from the plane. Okay. Yeah. Right. And you're like, come to 5D so you can see it with me. But he was rejecting in 4D and then you finally probably brought him to 5D. Love that. Yeah. And then, but you you have to go in between 5D and 3D. I'll give you the book. It's actually super interesting. But it's like, you have to go in between them. You can never stay in one. You can't yeah. live in 5D right. and you can't live in just three. Right. But some people only live in three. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So, you know, um, as a part of my kind of ongoing, like learning about myself and getting in touch with myself, I am in accepting myself, all the parts of me, uh, I am more able to be me, which is a spiritual being who's here to talk about my story and share my story and talk about feelings and, and, and call people out on their feelings and invite them to share their feelings in every aspect of my life. For a really long time- It's I all f- one, the personal yes. and professional aspect for you. For a long time, I felt like I had to compartmentalize like Ashley, the healer, Ashley, the mom, Ashley, the wife. Oh, too many. Ashley, the business no, person. we just need Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't know that like it was okay to be me in right. all those places. Right. Coming so, back full circle to your not mom, thinking you're okay. Yeah. Being you. Yep. hundred yeah. percent. Um, and so now, and this is why I reached out to Andrew the other day. Um, we have an annual dinner for our, our executive team executive, yep. and their wives and, and all that, or spouses, I should say. And uh, I am going to bring in like a meditation coach to teach them mind body connection and beautiful how He's to take perfect how to take care of themselves and because these people are working crazy hours and they don't know how to shut off yeah that's i mean and eventually that will lead to burnout 100 because i know that to be true from my right. own experience yeah, another full circle moment another full circle full, yeah you're just a circle i am well we all are just a circle. women especially <laughs> but um but yeah so i feel like for me the you know the spiritual aspect of being is just who I am every day, all day. Yeah. And you know, the, I get bi- that. the business world, the men in business world may laugh a little bit when I talk about it. Like, cause I put my phone in do not disturb every day at five o'clock and I meditate for half an hour. That's an interesting. And if I'm really tired, I take a 20 minute nap. Wow. That's okay. If I have a headache or whatever, and then I'm back online at six and they're like, Oh, I called you. And I was like, sorry, I was meditating. Anyway, go ahead. Like, I just have no problem saying it right so now. So it's funny. I'm at that phase in my life right mm-hmm. now where I just like say it. Yeah. And I definitely can, st- I, I think I'm at the point too where I've blocked out reactions in a way. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even care what people <laughs> think. I'm like, yeah, I was, and that's probably weird to people, but like, I'm at this point where I'm like unapologetically myself. Yeah. So I'm just like, if like that resonates with you, like we vibe. If yeah. it doesn't, like we don't. Yeah. I'm like, I wish you the best, but like, yeah. fuck off yeah. also. I've so like, been that way. me? No, me. You, oh yeah, do you've definitely always been that I don't way. know, it's just like, I can't, it's like a problem. Well, it's not a problem. problem. No, it's not a problem. problem. It's not a problem. It's just, you got to find the people that get it. Yeah. That's really all it is. The people that resonate. Girls, people that are soul busy. You've got enough people in your life. It's not like you don't have people. Well, that's the thing. Max it's capacity. like, how many yeah, people can you give a hundred percent to totally. is what we talk about a lot. You know, yeah. it's like, just it, it, there's a boundary. There's yeah. a, there's a cap to that. Yep. Yeah. A very interesting episode. Yeah. I really enjoyed this I feel like we talked about so much that our story is beautiful though. Thank you. It is. Okay. And like, I'm, I'm really glad you told it in this way on this platform. And obviously like, I think everybody should read your book. Is I, it it's on not, Audible? Yeah. Uh, is it you? Maybe I'll do that. No, it's not me. Damn it. Aww. I couldn't get through reading it without crying. Oh, is it a girl? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll listen to it. Yeah. Well, that must be really hard to listen to. I've listened to the book. She has a little I'll pronu- to it. she has a little pronunciation issues every now and then. Well, because like <laughs> Greek names. Oh, um, oh, oh. but uh, but yeah, she did a good job. So you can get the it. book, The Unspoken, yep. on Amazon. Correct. An Amazon bestseller. Yes. By Woo! the way. Um, we can support one mission. Yep. And all the amazing things you've done for families. Yeah, thank you. I mean, you. Cumberland get Farms, a coffee get a coffee Florida. and just think of Ashley <laughs> or get a coffee at Seven Brewer in Florida. Yep. Um, and get a car wash, you know, yeah. just like go to Waterways, get a little car wash, a little there water here, a little water there, like all the things. But I think mainly my takeaway is just like your resilience and your persistence is just really beautiful, but also the way you reflect and learn from each step. 
yeah. I found very interesting in this oh, conversation. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was very connected. I love hanging out with you guys, and I love you know talking about this stuff with people who get it. Yeah, because not a lot of people are w- oh, willing to be authentic and um, you know vulnerable. So it's kind of like my superpower. I'll tell anybody anything if I feel like it's going to help them. Me too. I get that. Mm-hmm. No shame. Yeah. Just like living. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks for being here. We love you. Love you. Rock on. (laughs) 